Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Container ships have been in use for more than half a century. In the 1950s, the containerization of imported and exported increased the necessity for large, flat-decked boats that carry these metal storage bins across oceans. Modern ships are among the largest vessels ever constructed and can carry up to 24,000 containers at once. Computerized design and testing have greatly improved the efficiency of these vessels while reducing the chances of containers being lost at sea. However, such efforts have not eliminated this costly and time-consuming occurrence. Indeed, crossing the ocean puts container ships at risk of encountering heavy storms that may cause them to lose containers overboard by the dozens or more. To prevent future accidents, companies like Marin, the Maritime Research Institute of the Netherlands, have learned to recreate the exact wind and wave conditions that caused previous storm-related accidents. They then use ship models placed in wave simulating chambers to visualize each incident in a controlled environment accurately. It was eventually determined that large-scale container ships, which can be over 180 feet wide, are very stable. When waves push them from their upright position, they seek to return to equilibrium as fast as possible. This causes a rolling effect, which can cause forces to be applied to the stacked containers, wearing down the metal clamps connecting them into towers. Then there is the upward heaving motion of the ship, which can sometimes cause the vessel's bottom to hit the seabed, forcing vibrations up through the hull, to the deck, and into the containers. The last factor at work in container loss is high waves corroding the metal equipment connecting containers to the deck and the containers to one another. Thanks to the information gleaned from these model simulations, container ship designers can alter the engineering and hydrodynamics of future ships. Some of the largest container ships in the world can be as much as 1,200 feet long, more than 100 feet longer than the United States Navy's General Ford-class aircraft carrier. This makes constructing these ships quite the undertaking. Typically, large vessels like this are assembled inside a dry dock, a mechanical channel connected to a waterway that can be flooded for ships to enter and exit. Most of the crew quarters and other necessary facilities are located in the tower that houses the bridge. The rest of the hull consists of a series of holds, which can be constructed separately and then welded together. It takes multiple heavy lifting cranes to move these massive hull sections into place. 
But once the modular pieces are fully assembled, the ship is essentially complete. This means the dry dock can be flooded and the ship can begin performing its duties. Few situations are more dangerous for a boat and its crew than the threat of capsizing. Though this can happen with almost any type of vessel, providing enough sideways force is utilized. However, it is far more common in smaller boats or those with flat bottoms. The lack of a keel makes it easier for the vessel to flip upside down putting it completely at the mercy of the wind and waves. That's why companies like Rafnar Maritime out of Iceland are designing self-riding boats that can be turned 180 degrees in order to remain keel downwards at all times. These unique designs are based on the simple power of buoyancy, but they still need rigorous testing to prove they can perform as intended. This is done by placing a hoisting loop on the side and bottom of the boat and exerting upward pressure. The testers first notice that the boat is resisting this moment as it wants to remain keel down. Once turned 90 degrees, the boat automatically begins to right itself. While relatively new, this technology is so impressive that it is already being utilized by Coast Guards and sea rescue organizations worldwide. The United States Coast Guard is widely recognized as one of the best maritime security and search and rescue organizations in the world. In order to patrol the country's 95,000 miles of coastline, it takes multiple vessels that are each capable of handling specific jobs. The largest of these vessels are the cutters. These fast-moving vehicles measure more than 65 feet long and are capable of performing a wide range of missions in almost any weather conditions. When operating in the frigid north, the USCG often employs even larger ships, known as icebreakers. These can measure up to 400 feet long and can move through up to 10 feet of Arctic ice. Of course, the Coast Guard also utilizes a wide range of smaller vessels and response boats, including a rigid hull inflatable craft capable of moving through the waves with great speed. To ensure its personnel are as up to the task as the vessels themselves, the Coast Guard requires its captains to participate in surf training. This is a process by which fully crewed ships are directed into high waves and breakers. The best approach to such barriers is to plow through them rather than risk being capsized. In 
since Coast Guard rescue operations typically occur during rough weather. These skills are very important. As part of the United States Navy, combat vessels are asked to stand up to a lot more than just waves and bad weather. For instance, here we can see the USS Gerald R. Ford, currently the largest aircraft carrier in the world, participating in full ship shock trials. This is where high-powered explosives are set off within the vicinity of the ship to see how well its hull, electronics, and other systems stand up to the blast. Though the hulls of modern aircraft carriers are armored, explosions like this can do extensive damage in the right circumstances. When it comes to a brand new $13 billion ship like the Gerald R. Ford, it's essential to know exactly how much punishment the vessel can take. Though highly resistant to damage and armed with a wide variety of missile and torpedo countermeasures, modern United States aircraft carriers have other options for evading enemy fire. This Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, the predecessor to the Gerald R. Ford class, is practicing evasive maneuver techniques in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Despite being nearly 1,100 feet long and weighing over 100,000 tons, these aircraft carriers are surprisingly fast. In fact, their four steam turbine engines can push them up to speeds of around 35 miles per hour, allowing them to outrun an array of smaller ships and in many cases, their weapons. Moored. Ship's color. In a real combat scenario, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier can move within 700 square miles in just half an hour. In an hour and a half, this can be expanded to a 6,000 square mile area reducing the carrier's chance of having its position pinpointed by its enemies. Smaller ships like destroyers and cruisers utilize a wide range of maneuvers, both offensive and defensive. These include drifting, defensive patterns, and zigzagging. Unfortunately, these are rarely enough to escape a potential threat, especially with the many advances in missile technology over the past few decades. For that reason, these maneuvers are almost always combined with high-tech jamming and decoy tactics. The former attempts to disorient the systems of the enemy ship or incoming missile so that it misses its target. The latter creates a radar signature known as a decoy cloud, which can convince an incoming missile or torpedo that the ship is actually located elsewhere. Last but not least, there are certain missiles, like the Sea Sparrow, that are fast and accurate enough to intercept enemy missiles before they reach their targets. Whether waging war against enemy nations or merely against Mother Nature, there's no denying the ocean is a dangerous place.
with new engineering, better maneuvers, and high-tech countermeasures. There are more options than ever to keep vessels and their crews safe. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.